I'm not normally for party betrayal, but this is basically one of the few rare situations where it's appropriate. Welcome to the Twisted Pint Tavern! Today we're visiting r slash dnd to check out some game tales with betrayals, and we're gonna tune into one of our Discord members' stories at the end. Buckle up! Don't sleep with my wife. This was a few years ago when I was playing a Kenku Hexblade slash Grave Cleric. Me and another party member were at odds, since he stole money from me and my character was pissed at him. Yes, he was a rogue. So we as a party decided to go to my character's house to celebrate killing a villain in the story. My character was married and his wife had made him and the party a meal. While we were eating and my character was preoccupied, the rogue approached my character's wife and rolled to persuade her to sleep with him and of course, he rolled a 20. So they slept together. Cut to a few minutes later, the rogue comes out of the room after sleeping with her and tells my character about it. I looked at the DM and said, he's dead. I then proceeded to use my surprise and action to cast two Path of the Grave, which allowed me to do four times damage to him. I activated my Ring of Action Surge with two charges and cast four Guiding Bolts all at level three and four, dealing a total of 280 damage, tripling his health, and instantly eviscerating him. He out of game got pissed and promptly left the campaign after that. Guess this was more of a horror story with a happy ending I guess, lol. Okay, first off, what kind of DM allows that? Like th there's gotta be some degree of like consent between the players I guess is the best way to put it. Who, who, who does that? And, and these are some of the comments. Honestly, shame on the DM for even allowing that. Persuasion isn't magic. One role should not cause someone to give up a deeply held belief. Absol absolutely, I agree with you. And then the reply had a character that was obsessed with making beer. Rolled a nat 20 to look for some in a tomb. You have never been as sure of anything else in your life as you are that there is no beer to be found in this 20,000 year old tomb. I mean, yeah, the best way to think of it is a nat 20 is not an instant success, it's the best case scenario. So in a scenario where there is no possible success, you at least don't fail as badly as you would have. Sounds like rules were just thrown away that day, yeah, absolutely. At my table, doing something to another PC or an NPC with a strong emotional bond, includes backstory NPCs as well as those met in-game, requires affirmative consent. I pause the game and get consent from the players involved. If not everyone agrees to a course of action, it just doesn't happen. We are humans playing a game and we don't trample the fun of our friends, period. Yeah, no, I'm with you 100%. I'm not the kind of DM who says I need every player to agree with everything that's happening at all times because then no one would ever take damage, no one would ever risk death. Like, no, you, you have to throw some twists in there. But sleeping with a character's wife is not a twist and i know there's probably people out there who are like oh but it's just an npc it's all pretend no screw that that's that's crossing a boundary that is not okay okay that one got heated on to the next betrayal should i betray my group so to sum things up our group has just retrieved a very dangerous rare object and instead of returning it to a mysterious benefactor in town as we originally set out to do they want to destroy it I feel like it may really throw the whole plot off in a way that would work against my neutral evil character's interests, and I want to roleplay him as I think he would react to the situation. He would steal it and take it back himself, not allowing the group to destroy it. The DM seems fine with me making the attempt. I just hope they don't all get upset about it. My character wouldn't give a flying fuck, so should I? Is it too much of a dick move? It's, it's a bit of a dick move, it's a bit of a dick move, but you're playing a neutral evil character if at the start of the game everybody was aware you're playing an evil character, there's the possibility of this kind of thing coming up, th then read the room, see if it's something that you want to do. I personally wouldn't do that kind of betrayal with the party because it can lead to irreparable tension, but at the same time if the DM's kind of giving you the nudge to do it, the DM might have your back and could say maybe you were enticed by the benefactor or you felt like you should do this because of the magic of the item or whatever. There's, there's ways to make it not a direct betrayal to the party. Before we go into the comments on this post, make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments and or join the Twisted Pine Tavern Discord server. The link is in the description and we pull every now and then for stories to throw into videos like this. Plus, there's a lot of D&D talk that goes on in there, so it's pretty cool. If you're going to betray the party in a way that works for the DM and helps develop the plot, then you might be okay. But regardless if you betray the party, good, evil, or whatever your motivations, be prepared to make a new character and retire the betrayer as an NPC. If you roleplay as a betrayer, be prepared for the other characters to roleplay as those who've been betrayed. That, that, that's the best way to put it. 
If you're going to roleplay as a kind of person that would do something, you need to be prepared for the others to roleplay in response to that. A lot of tables will discuss during session zero whether PvP actions like that are allowed. If y'all never had that discussion, first, you should in the future, especially if the party includes evil characters. Second, tread carefully. If the DM approves and you think the other players would be okay with it, go ahead. If not, it might warrant an out-of-game discussion with everyone to see if it's okay. I prefer to keep things in-game as much as possible, but there does come a point where just bringing something up like, hey, out-of-game, I'm about to do this, are you guys okay with that? that? That can solve a lot of problems before they start. I'm not normally for party betrayal, but this is basically one of the few rare situations where it's appropriate. I think story-wise it's appropriate, but again, you gotta be careful of the ramifications. The real trick is working with the DM to make the party believe the object has been destroyed, and then taking or sending it back. That way you can stay with the party and set up a dramatic reveal later on. I think this would be a good way to do it because you're at least keeping it story related. Yes, you've betrayed them, but it's not you directly opposing them per se, it's the DM kind of using you as a plot point. That's a little different. And now let's check out a story of betrayal from our Discord server. We'll continue this Discord submission segment in our future videos, so make sure to join in on the fun and maybe get to see your story in an upcoming video. We were fighting a powered up Strahd in his tomb and doing pretty well. This was mainly due to our crazy Oath of the Ancients Paladin Drac giving us resistance to his spells with his aura of warding. For context, Strahd had three of the four homebrewed blood gems he needed to become almost unstoppable, and at the time we believed we destroyed the fourth. However, right when Strahd gets down into probably the single digits, Drac steals the pendant containing the blood gems and revealed that he'd switched it out for a fake which we actually destroyed. It turns out he made a deal with a god of chaos at the Amber Temple that for the cost of his servitude, he would be turned into a powerful vampire. After inserting the final gem and baring his fangs, he started to briefly fight us until the god of chaos he made the deal with decided to teleport us far away outside of Barovia. And that's how our crazy, alcoholic ally ended up being our enemy. For about three sessions, but that's a story for another time. We discussed these blood gems in the Discord, I, I believe, at one point, and I absolutely love it. The idea of Strahd having to collect these items at the same time as the party trying to collect items for their ultimate end fight, it just seems really cool, and I'm absolutely working it into my Curse of Strahd game. Also, of all people to betray the party, a paladin, man, that, that hits hard. But anyway, we're gonna wrap up the video now. Thank you guys so much for watching, and make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you've not done so already. Also, click that bell so you can be alerted every time we upload a video. Don't forget to join the Twisted Pint Tavern Discord server, where you can talk all things D&D and submit your own D&D stories. Oh, and uh, <laughs> let me set a little ground rule here for the tavern. Don't sleep with anybody's wife.